Hi. Now in this question, we're given that a particle is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 7 meters per second from a point on the ground. And in the first part, we've got to find the speed of the particle and its distance above the ground 0.4 seconds after projection. And then in part two, to go on to find the total distance traveled by the particle in the first 0.9 seconds after projection. So if you'd like to have a go at this question, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, do come back and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Well, the first thing I'd want to do with something like this is to draw a sketch of the motion. And I've come up with this fairly typical kind of sketch. We've got our particle here, initially projected upwards with a speed of 7 meters per second and at t equals 0.4 seconds let's say it's got a vertical speed of v meters per second upwards there's the acceleration due to gravity of g meters per second per second that acts downwards and it's moved a height h meters so We've got to find out what V is, and to do something like this, I'm going to use one of the equations of motion for constant acceleration, the SUVAP-based equations, in other words. So let's just mark an upwards direction as positive, and we'll put down our letters S for displacement, U for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A for acceleration, and T for time. Now, do we know these values? Well, we know some of them anyway. And for S, the displacement starting from here, taking upwards as positive, is H. Okay, so that's H. U, the initial velocity is positive 7, okay, because in the positive sense. V, well, we're trying to find that. And A, now A, the acceleration acts downwards, so that's going to be minus G. And the time T is 0.4 seconds, okay? So using an appropriate equation here, we've got to find out V. At the moment, I don't know what S is, so I need to get an equation just with U, V, A and T in. And that equation is going to be V equals U plus AT. And so if we substitute our values in here, we know U, U is 7. And then we're adding to this A. A is minus G. I'm going to write that in as minus 9.8 now, OK? taking g to be 9.8. It's negative because it's acting in the opposite sense to what we've got here. And t is 0.4. So if you work this out, what you end up with is 3.08. So v is 3.08 meters per second. OK. Now, the next part, we've got to find out the height that the particle rises. And in other words, we've got to find h. So for this one, what I'm going to use is the equation s equals ut plus a half at squared. Now I could have used other equations to get s like v squared equals u squared plus 2as, but it would require the answer for v. So I picked this one because it's independent of v. Now, if we just put in our values, u then is 7, so we've got 7 multiplied by 0.4, and then plus a half multiplied by the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, and then multiply by t squared, which is 0.4 squared. And if you work this out, we end up with 2.016, okay? And that'd be measured in meters. 
So S represents displacement and that displacement started from here. It's gone up like this. So that displacement is also the same as the distance moved. All right. So that's going to be H meters, which is 2.016 meters. OK. Now, in the next part, this is quite tricky. We've got to find the total distance then traveled by the particle in the first 0.9 seconds after projection. Now, with this, what we can't be sure of is after 0.9 seconds, has the particle gone up to here and just not reached its maximum height? Or has it reached its maximum height and, say, on the way back down again? So what we've got to do is, say, find out how long it takes to reach its maximum height. And then I can compare it to the 0.9 seconds. And I can see that if that time to reach the maximum height is less than 0.9 seconds, I know that it's on the way up. If that time turns out to be more than 0.9 seconds, it must be on its way down. And when it comes to the total distance, we've got to be very careful because remember, S in these equations only gives displacement, not distance. So we're going to need to interpret our answer. So first of all then, I'm going to find out the time it takes to reach its maximum height. So I can determine if it's on the way up or on the way down by comparing it to 0.9 seconds. So what we'll do here then, this, this is part one, let's just label that part one. In this second part then, I'm going to work with this maximum height. And let's say the maximum height, we'll call it big H. And if we're going to build up an equation to work this out, it's going to be based on our SUVAT ones, okay? S U V A N T. So let's just put on what we know, okay? So S, the displacement, is going to be H for that maximum height. U is going to be 7. I'm taking upwards, by the way, as positive. So V. Well, that will be zero at the maximum height. The acceleration acts downwards. That's going to be minus g or minus 9.8. And t, well, that's the thing we're trying to find. So what equation would we use then to connect these variables together? Well, it would be the one that doesn't involve s, if we're after just t, and it's going to be v equals u plus AT. So using that equation, we therefore have for V zero equals U, which is seven, and then it will be plus negative nine point eight, so that'd be minus nine point eight multiplied by T. And so if we rearrange this equation for T, T will equal seven divided by nine point eight. And if you work this out, you end up with t equaling 0.71 and so on, seconds. So when I look at this, I can see that this is less than 0.9 seconds. So I know that this particle must have gone up, up to its maximum height, and then would be on its way back down again. So if we just border this off, we can now work out what that maximum height was. That's big H. And to do that, we would use, let's say, let's just put using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. All right. I don't want to involve the T now to get this maximum height. You could if you wanted to, but it just looks an awkward decimal. So I'm going to avoid that. And if I use that equation, for V, at the maximum height, it's instantaneously 0. So that's going to be 0 equals U squared. So that's going to be 7 squared plus 2 times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8.
and s, well that's h. And if we rearrange this equation, this is a negative term, so if I take this term to the other side, I've got 2 times plus 9.8h equals 7 squared, and then to get h, I would divide both sides by 2 times 9.8, so I got h equals 7 squared divided by 2 multiplied by 9.8. And, again, if you work this one out, you find that it comes out at exactly 2.5, 2.5 meters. We can now move into the last part of the question. We now know that the height is 2.5 meters. So, what we can do is now find out what the displacement, remember it is displacement, S, is when t equals 0.9 and we can interpret it that distance moved with the 2.5 meters as the maximum height so let's just set up our suvat variables again s u v a and t and what we've got now is that we're trying to find out the displacement okay when t equals 0.9 seconds. u is still going to be 7. I'm not interested in the final velocity. The acceleration acts always downwards, okay, so it's always going to be minus 9.8, okay, we're taking upwards as positive by the way, and uh, acceleration will always be negative, even when it's going coming back down, okay, because we've taken positive as up. So what equation would we use for something like this? Well, it's going to be s equals ut plus a half at squared. And if we substitute our values in here, we'll end up with s equaling u, which is 7, multiplied by t at 0 0.9. And then we've got plus a half times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, multiplied by t squared, which is 0.9 squared. Okay, a bit squashed in there, but I hope you can see that. And if you work this out, you end up with 2.331, okay, meters. Now, how do we interpret this for the distance moved? Well, if we just come down under here, okay, what have we got for that distance travelled? Well, we know that the particle now went up to its maximum height, which was 2.5 metres. And now we've got its displacement is 2.331 metres after 0.9 seconds. So it is now 2.331 metres above the ground. So what's happened is it's gone up to its maximum height of 2.5 metres and then it's come back down a distance. So we've got to add that distance on and that has got to be the maximum height minus this distance above the ground. So we'll just put plus 2.5 minus the 2.3 one. And if you work that out, that distance travelled is equal to 2.669 metres. So, quite a good question actually, because it really does test on knowledge of what S is, in my opinion anyway. S representing displacement. Okay, so I hope you've been able to follow that, and uh, if you got it right, well... Uh, that's excellent. Well done.